talk a lot about fruit. Go ahead, on the count of three, I want you to sing your favorite fruit ever. One, two, three, oranges! Now, I want you to shout out your least favorite fruit. Cantaloupe! I really don't like cantaloupe, but I do love oranges. Today in the zone, we are gonna talk about a special orange. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell them what fruit of the spirit the orange is. That's right, joy. Now, when I say the word joy, you're probably thinking joy comes from things that make you feel happy. For example, I love smoothies. Smoothies make me so happy, but when they're all gone, when my cup is empty, when I've slurped up the last drop of my smoothie, well, it just stinks. Smoothies do bring me joy, but there's a recipe for a different kind of joy. This kind of joy, it never, ever ends. It never runs out, it's always there, and it always overflows our cups. And there are two men in the Bible who were filled with this kind of joy. Their names were Paul and Silas. Hi, I'm Paul. Hi, I'm Silas. They were thrown into prison Whoa. For, what's going on? <laughs> for doing nothing wrong. Oh hey, man, where what? am I at now? Uh, this does not seem familiar. Now, I don't know about you boys and girls, but if I got in trouble for doing nothing wrong, I would be extremely upset. I would probably be a really rotten fruit. What about you? If you got in trouble for doing nothing wrong, what would you choose to be? Would you be joyful or mad or really, really sad? Well, Paul and Silas, they chose to be joyful. Let's see what the recipe for joy calls for. Oh, the overwhelming, never-ending, reckless love of God. While Paul and Silas were in prison, they were praying and singing songs to God. And you know something about joy? It's contagious. Kind of like an orange. That's right. If you peel an orange, you can smell it from a mile away. Seriously, peel an orange in the lunchroom and see if your friend sitting all the way across from you can smell it. They probably could. And in the same way, all the other prisoners who were around Paul and Silas could hear them singing. They could hear their joy. It chases me down my feet till I'm found. Leave the 99. I, I couldn't, I couldn't earn, earn it. The other prisoners might not have been able to see them, but they knew Paul and Silas were joyful. Their joy was so loud, everyone can hear. And their joy was so powerful something incredible happened. There was an earthquake and the prison foundations were shaken and the prison walls came down. Their chains were so loose just because they had so much joy. This Whoa. is amazing. Hey, what's going on here? Look, I'm free. Do you guys remember what we learned this Christmas in New York City? Joy brings... Freedom! That's right, say it with me. One, two, three, freedom! Joy was like a key that unlocked prison doors and broke everyone free. And the jailer, the one guarding the prison walls, he was shocked. He wanted the key to this freedom. Where can I find this joy and freedom? The, the kind that can break down prison walls. This joy comes from Jesus. Listen man, just believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. Then the Bible tells us the jailer brought them to his house and he fed them a delicious, yummy meal. And the Bible said he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. The jailer found the same recipe for the same fruit that Paul and Silas had. He needed Jesus to have that kind of joy. Maybe you're like Paul and Silas and something totally unfair has happened to you. Maybe your friend said something really mean about you behind your back, or your older siblings won't let you play with them, or maybe your younger siblings got all the candy and all the love, or maybe you got in trouble for something you didn't do. Will you choose to be a rotten fruit and be mad and sad, or will you choose joy like Paul and Silas did? Quick, if you would choose joy, I want you to do your best happy dance on the count of three. One, two, three, go! Okay, okay, okay. 
Whew, that was fun. Now sit down and sit up straight and tall, lean in super, super close. I don't know about you, but when things get tough in my life, it's really easy to listen to rotten fruit. It's really easy to have them tell me what to do, tell me to be mad. But there's a different kind of fruit that the Bible tells us to listen to. It's the fruit of joy. Paul and Silas listened to this kind of fruit. So no matter what happens, they believed in Jesus. They believed he was so good. That fruit was a lot louder than the fruit that was rotten. And guess what? We can have that same kind of joy because it's a fruit of the Spirit. When we believe in Jesus and love him with all of our hearts, when we are super close, like really, really, really close to Jesus, we can experience that same kind of joy. We can taste and see how good God is all the time, which is what our big idea is all about. Let's do it right now. Yep, on your feet. One, two, three. Taste and see nom, 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 nom. that God is good. Uh. Sweet! Yeah.